Okay, welcome back. So we've got a brand spanking new project in Godot here. Uh, I am going to show you how you can get a character model like this one out of Blender with all the different animations that it might have. Um, and we'll go from there. The model is only going to respond to whatever is selected here in the NLA panel. So if, when you come into nonlinear animation, if you change it to walking, it'll start to walk. If you change it to idle, it'll it'll do that. Um, so you just be mindful of, you know, we're using NLA. So what we're going to start with here is a new 3D scene. Um, I'm going to use a couple add-ons. One of them is one of my add-ons uh, called UV tools, I think. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and get this one. It's just going to help me slap in a, a static body floor really easily. And then I'm also going to use Kenny uh, text. Yeah, Kenny prototype textures. So we'll grab this one too. All right. So I'm going to add what I call a proto body. And I'm going to I'm going to first actually enable the plugin. So we're going to turn that one on. And then control A and proto body. So we'll double click that. What we want to do here is we're going to set the size using these uh, things here and 100 and I'm going to set the transform to be negative 0.0. That's not the right size. So we'll do a 0.1 and we'll set this to negative 0.05. That should allow us to see the grid, I think. Yeah, so we do negative 0.05. We're like literally sitting right at the zero level. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to drag in one of these prototyping textures. doesn't really matter which one, uh, just any of these. And you'll see that the add on just kind of scales that for you. Um, it makes a static body and does all that, does all that good stuff. Um, we're also going to need to save this. So I'm not going to do a full project structure here, but normally what I do is I have an assets folder and I separate this from a modules folder. Um, just to keep it nice and organized, right? So if this is level level 01 or whatever, um, I'll try to keep all my level 01 modules saved in there. So we'll go ahead and save this scene under modules level 01. Let's call it level 01. And I'm also going to create a folder in assets. We'll have a folder for the zombie. On the Blender side of things, we'll take this. I do want to reset the animation first. So scrub that back to one, click on your animation, and then just clear it, okay? Um, so you can just clear it there. And then you notice the rig is still not in the neutral pose, so we're going to just clear all transforms on that guy. All right, um, with that done, we're pretty much ready to export this thing. So we just go File, Export, GLTF, Assets. So I'm going to dump everything asset wise in here. So under here, you're going to do GLTF separate. Let's include visible. So when you do visible, you have to make sure your control rig is visible as well as the model underneath. And then we're going to do, I think most of this is default. We'll take a quick look. Uh, here's the really important section. If you change this to be NLA tracks, um, it pretty much just works like beautifully. So let's go ahead and export that. So we do export. And we will wait for this to come in on this side. And then we get something come in under assets. We have zombie 2 All right, so we got our textures. That's cool, as well as the, uh, the model. So the next thing you want to do is you're going to double click this and just maybe give a visual confirmation that your model comes in right. I mean, that looks pretty good to me. Um, as for the animations, you're going to want to set them to linear. You're going to press enabled here and then pick a path. So um, I always save my module, my animations resources under the modules. You could do it in assets. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't really make a big difference, but we'll do, uh, maybe I'll do a folder for anims and we'll save this as idle. And then we hit keep custom tracks here. You need that one. Uh, then we do the same thing for the other animation. So we'll just save this as um, walking. All right, then we re-import. So with that done, we're going to need a character body 3D in the scene. Uh, I'm going to drag this guy in. The size should be okay. What we're going to see in a minute is that our our rotation is not 
every time I do a model this way from blender, I know we need to rotate it 180 degrees. Um, but we'll see that. We'll see that in a minute because I think in Godot negative Z is like in the forward direction. Uh, if you have a vector that's pointing, you know, forward, you might call it forward in space. That's that corresponds to negative Z. So we'll do that. Um, maybe right off the bat. So I'll show you how, how nice the animation system is. When you do NLA tracks, you get exactly these names that we came up with, right? So if I play this one, play, there you go. There's your drunk, uh, stumbling zombie animation, which is pretty, pretty cool. I love that. Um, as well as the idle, right? Um, the other thing you're going to want to do with your animation player is come down to blend. So blend time, and it's how long it takes to blend between any two animations. I usually like a value of like 0.3. Okay, so that's that. We're also going to throw in a collision shape. Um, it's going to be a capsule. Hit number one key, same as Blender, so it kind of brings you to that uh, that side view. Um, we're going to pull it up, maybe to about the center of the torso. We notice it's too tall, right? So we just bring it down, play with it a bit. Um, you definitely want the bottom of the capsule to be on the ground. That's pretty important for uh, you know getting getting your player model to actually touch the ground. And maybe we'll shrink it down a bit more. These tools can be a little annoying because you notice I'm having to scale and then move, scale and then move. So that's just kind of how it is. And then we'll shrink on this axis, maybe to about there. All right, we'll look at another view from the side and yeah, that's probably okay. We might want to pull it a little bit forward and we'll go with that. All right, so we've got a collision shape. We've got a character model. Um, next thing we're going to need is a script on this character body. So I'm going to rename this uh, zombie and normally you would put this in a separate packed scene. Um, I'm just going to do it all here, which, which is fine as well. We'll do modules. I'll do a zombie module and we're going to create a new script called zombie. I don't like the capitalization. Not sure why it does that. And yeah, we're going to grab the template and just hit create should be okay. Well, this is not quite in the right place. So we'll go modules zombie and then drop it here. I'm kind of showing all the structure. This is what I do in my games. Um, yeah, it might be useful for to you, I don't know. So the first thing I do um, to satisfy my OCD is just get rid of all these comments. I don't know why I have to do this. Uh, it just, I don't know, I can't handle comments someone else wrote in my code, so. Um, we're not gonna be jumping and we're actually gonna use a different system for the input directions. Uh, as well as we need some some mapping. So we're gonna use left, right, uh, forward and back, not up and down, as it doesn't quite make sense. And we don't need the jump velocity. Um, so first let's go ahead and get this mapping set up. So we do project settings, input map. We'll do left, right, forward, and back. So left, I'm gonna do A, right is D, forward is W, back is s okay so input maps are done i'll change this to left right forward and back so i think forward is going to be in the negative z direction that's kind of how all this uh, unfolds and i'm going to just pull up a script on the side that i'm referencing here basically what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a way to it's going to we're going to do a bit of a different camera so i'm going to copy this in um, we're going to do velocity.x is going to go in whatever this input direction is, and it's going to correspond to the x and y coordinates of that vector is going to move us in x, or it's going to move us in z, right? Um, and the first two components are about the x-axis, and the next two are about z. But like I said in Godot, positives, sorry, the positive component of this, the forward component, is actually going to be negative z. So that's something to keep in mind. And then I have this look at interp function. Um, I just wanted for this video to do a camera a bit of a different way. We always see the same over the shoulder, uh, you know, WASD camera controls, free look controls. There's tons of videos on that. Uh, I just wanted to do something different so you can see, you know, you can get creative with, uh, with the camera. So look at interp. This is a nice little piece of code that I found, um, on the Godot forums or discord or whatever. 
and I'm just gonna pop this in. I used this in a previous game as well. And basically what it allows you to do, it like look at a certain direction. So what we do is we take the position, we add that input direction to it, right? So we're gonna be rotating about the player's position plus a little bit of a direction. And then this allows you to control how fast you rotate to that position. Uh, so that's kind of nice. As for the actual animations, uh, we're gonna drop in another function called play nm, and it's gonna take in a string. I always do statically typed functions. Um, it does offer quite a bit of performance boost in Godot 4. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna check that the animation player, which we haven't dropped in yet, we're gonna drop in this thing. All right, so we've got animation player. We're gonna check that the current anima animation is not equal to whatever that is. This prevents us from firing that play uh, function over and over and over. Just a little convenience thing. And then what we can do once we have this little bit of code, clean this up a bit. Um, once we have that, we can come down here and throw in some logic. So if our velocity length is greater than 0.1, we'll do play nm uh, walking, and then else we're gonna play nm idle. So these names literally correspond with whatever came from those NLA tracks. So this goes all the way back to Blender. Um, it's a really nice thing about this workflow. We don't have to mess with that anymore, right? So you set those names, it all comes in nicely. And then of course we do move and slide. So we still need a few more things here. Uh, obviously we don't have a camera in here yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I am gonna flip this model around right now. Um, so we're gonna do 180 on the y-axis. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is forward this way. So we will throw in a camera. So I'll do a camera 3D. And what I wanna do here is I'm gonna set a transform. I want it to follow the character. So it's gonna follow the character, but not rotate with it. Um, so maybe we'll place this at three and then 2.5. Let's see, is that maybe a roughly good position over the shoulder? And we'll do minus 30. Um, you can pretty easily see what a camera looks like by preview. There's also another add-on that uh, I think it's called like tiny camera or something where you get a little preview of the camera in the corner. It's a great, great add-on. I usually, I use it when, I, when I'm making games. Um, so we'll go with that. And then I'm going to throw a script on here. I will keep this in level 01 because I would, I would say that this is a part of the level 01 module. It's just kind of how I, how I organize things. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an offset vector. And when the node is first loaded, I'm going to load in whatever that, uh, whatever the position is that we just set, right? So we set a transform here, 0, 3, 2.5, all this good stuff. The rotation is going to stay the same. Uh, we're going to save that. And then as it processes, we are going to more or less follow around this zombie character. So we're going to do the we're going to do position equals zombie position plus that offset, all right? There's a million different ways to do cameras, but what's going to happen is this camera is going to follow around our character, right? And the character is going to be able to rotate and look at a direction so we can kind of see that animation. Um, now, of course, we also need a world environment. So we're just going to pop one of these in and we're going to do a directional light 3D. Uh, I like to keep all this stuff at the top usually. All right, so we got a world environment, directional light. Let's go ahead and set this up. Um, I usually like to just drag it up and away a bit. Kind of helps uh, visualize. We'll do this and you'll notice that there's no shadows. We've got to get some shadows. So we'll do uh, orthogonal should be fine. Um, we're not seeing it in the viewport here. It's interesting. So I don't really know why I think we should be. Oh, we have to enable shadows. All right, so there's your shadows enabled. Um, that looks bad. So with an orthogonal shadow, you bring down that distance and then it's gonna look a lot better. And then, right, so it doesn't need to be super crisp because what this is saying, you can't have an object more than like 10 meters away. Um, but the location of that camera is so close that it, see what happens after that distance, you just, it just doesn't compute the shadow. But I think that's fine. I think it looks really good. Um, the pancake size is just like 
how rough it's going to be. I think there's no reason to have that uh, as a large value. We can drop that down a bit. So we'll go with that. And let's see if there's anything else I'm missing. Yeah, so let's go ahead and run it. So if I run this and uh, we'll hit play and select current. Go full screen. That speed is really fast, right? <laughs> so you can see animation wise, we're getting the animation. That's cool. Um, but the speed is way, way too fast. And you can always tell because you get the sliding effect. And that's why these prototyping textures are so useful because you can gauge very quickly, like, does this animation look right? Uh, the animation is cool, right? And that effect I was talking about where if I go to the right, the character lurps to the right, you know? Um, so yeah, it looks cool, but the speed is way too high. So we'll tweak this. Um, I did previously do this and I did find a kind of a perfect number. So yeah, for, for getting the speed right, you just want to play with it, right? You want to reduce it until your character steps match really well. Um, so let's go to zombie, and I'll change this to 1.35. And let's run that. All right, so this looks a lot better, and this probably isn't even perfect. The ground might be moving still a bit too fast. Um, but what you'll notice is that these animations, they don't have a constant forward speed. Um, so you'd have to very carefully craft your animation to have a very good constant forward speed um, to get that effect. But yeah, I, I'm I'm personally really happy with this result. Um, one thing you'll notice, the shadow doesn't look quite right. Uh, we can fix that. So we just need to up that distance. I mean, orthogonal shadows are fine. They look, they're a little crisper. So let's bump that up. That looks pretty good. So there you go. There's your walking, uh, scary zombie character. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'd like watching. Um, if you followed along and made something, you know, feel free to show me like I'm, I'm available on Twitter. Or you can reach out to me on different platforms. Uh, my links are all below, but yeah, I'd love to see what you made if you made anything and yeah. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.